So first of all, I wanted to thank uh, you, the, I mean, the Constantina and all the State of Concept and Ahmed for inviting, and as well Liliana um, for curating the space. Um, it's, I feel very honored to be with all of you and to be able to share in my practice from Eastern Europe mainly. Um, few, before I begin, I wanted to just add uh, two things that uh, I will be focused on collective work uh, from Poland. Uh, um, I will be talking about my ideas, uh, my thoughts on it. And when I'm referring as we, I'm referring as our collective, as the people who are working along with me. Uh, at this moment, this is uh, four people. It's Gosia, Martina, Rafał and Jakub. Uh, I think it's important to say their names as well. Um, and all the, so the lectures is divided in two parts. One will be, I will be reading and we will see some footage with that. And all the footage are coming from archives of Domia. So um, let me begin. Let me begin with a story that my grandmother Pelagia was regularly repeating after a glass of brandy. She was 16 years young when the Second World War started. The story is about lard, a semi-solid white pork fat served on glass shards of broken jars. Torun was bombarded from the 1st of September for nearly a week. Its airport, the railway station, two bridges all the ways out. On the 7th of September, the Wehrmacht, the army Nazi Germany, entered the city, and Torun capitulated. Fleeing seemed the only choice that time. Grandmother Pelagia, in a rush of escaping, grabbed a few jars of lard from her family pantry. The glass broke during the escape, but the jars were still held together by a cotton cloth. She would hand out little pieces of glass with lard to others in hiding for days. She used to end the story with a tender, but somehow bitter understanding that it was at least an easy and a fair way of sharing equal portions. The act of caring through the act of sharing the preserved food, an act of caring as preserving from being damaged while being broken. Most of my adult life I spent moving. After studying architecture and urbanism at the University of Florence, I became fascinated by different forms of communities. Autonomous, self-managed, self-sufficient social units. Their identities, practices, and dynamics of the group, such as belonging, reinforcement, and pedagogies. I used to be a member of varied experimental communities in different countries with strong political ag agendas, amongst other freedom community in the forest of the rural Catalonia, with no electricity and water only in the river, musical and artistic communities in London before cr criminalization of free housing practice, radical queer house projects or Marxist squads in Germany. I learned a lot observing their engagement in social and political struggles collective actions, theories, and critical reflections. The aim of most of these places was not only redistribution of ideas, but also creation of production of new knowledge, as well as new centers of sociality where it became possible to create new forms of solidarity. After years of living in the West, constantly changing languages in which I was dreaming, I came back to Eastern Europe, I wanted to be influenced by its forms of gathering and ways of commoning. I remember one of the first nights out after coming back to Poland, where while standing in the queue to a bar, I felt hands on my body, touching my back, groping slowly sliding down to my bottom. I was naively shocked that such things are still happening. I turned around and I saw a group of men in their 50s they seem irritatingly smug, conceited, standing so proudly, self-satisfied and smirky with their clammy hands. 
one of them even dared to open his mouth and said, are you going to cry now, darling? That time, I was still quite new to the city, still comprehending the reality around me. However, there was one dear friend of mine living and working at the art university. She had just gotten fired from an assistant job in the studio of photography. The professor she was collaborating with was known for repeatedly changing assistants, constantly for younger and most recent female graduates. She called me one afternoon, just after receiving the firing letter, where the reason for letting her go um, was stated as inconsistency in using capital versus small letters while writing students' names. That was the only official reason for firing her, written in an A4 document. The past few years, she was basically running the studio herself since none of the female or queer students wanted to work with him. At the same time, she was doing her PhD and was on the verge of an international artistic career. When she was handed the official letter, her superior added, the university is not a place for women, especially not for one who wants to teach and make an art career at the same time. He said that with the same smirk, like the fellows from the bar, even though I wasn't there. I didn't have to be there to know that expression. We all know it too well. I felt how the space for us was intensively and rapidly narrowing down. I understood that perhaps that space was never there. There was only an illusion of it to maintain the status quo by law. The illusion that I agreed to see because I wanted it to be there. I began to realize what I already knew. This environment is recognized by so many of us as a non-safe space for females, for queers, for migrants, for all the others. I knew that the only way out is through. We must act to survive. There is no space for us in the cities. There is still so little space for us in the world. The less space you have, the more room matters. We have to build our own buildings when the world doesn't accommodate us. The last sentence is a quote from Sarah Ahmed's recent book, Feminist Killjoy, and I like it, and I like to take it literally. To build feminist dwellings is an action with revolutionary implications. Becoming conscious is the very beginning of rethinking the public, manifesting the counter publics. We need a room, as Virginia Woolf told us, we need a room of our own to write. Only by claiming this room, actual or symbolic, we can reclaim homes for our commons. With a bit of luck, it can become part of the process of dismantling the master's house. Creating a safe space for our voices is a necessity, a necessity of surviving, an act of keeping, Preserve an act of keeping, preserving our constantly harsh voices is a survival project. Tulat ya ma hla nurha. شمس الشموسي يلا بنا نملاه ونحلب لابان الجاموسي قعدت عساق يا خلي أسمر وحليوي عواج الطاقي وقلي غني لي غني in 2018, I was standing on the stairs to a building and holding its keys. It was just after signing a lease for the following 10 years. A single standing house in the city center, in the yard of Święty Marcin, a main central street in the city of Poznan. At that time, the building was a ruin, and in 2023, it still is. After the transformation of 1989, the building became privatized. 
Later, it was taken over by the city due to the debts of the owners. However, the building and its yard were decommissioned by the city and were no longer in use for decades. The building was previously an important culture site. Well, for the more than 50 years, it was a home of the Photoplasticon, a 19th century machine presenting stereoscopic photography, a polygonal device with peep holes whose sliding mechanism passes new photos every few seconds. A protoplast to cinema. It was a collective experience while it had 25 viewing stations. The building was a cultural space where people met, learned, hang out, and in the mid 80s, its foyer was the only place where one could buy a movie poster or an audio cassette downtown. Decaying ruin with a culture, social, and film history seemed as a romantically proportional space for preserving the unhearable voices of a homogeneous society. We decided to preserve the building as a ruin, to root in the uprooted. Preservation of a ruin, not a renovation of the building, as a notion of care, claiming our political territory in tangible way of ruination. The ruin became a main narrative of our practice. Self-preservation in the face of oppression becomes a deep source of knowledge, our archives, our foundations. A practice of using architecture and its space as a healing treatment, caressing our community in restoring its identity. We welcome a ruin as a hybrid urban infrastructure that is welcoming our needs. The need of space, the need of a room of our own. The ruin became a symbol of the society we live in and its systematic oppression. It became a symbol of the state of precarious conditions we are forced to live under. Reappropriating the ruin common wealth by uncountability of its presence as it is, we knew we must cherish the ruin. The ruin became the symbol of our own, of our commoning, the fragility of the composing, the weakness of degradation, and the softness of the old plaster. To embrace perspective of females, queers, senior females, sex workers, migrants, diasporas, while at the same time creating the dynamics of the multitude becoming the common. To queer the homogeneity of the society. We perform, as Eva Majewska, a great Polish feminist philosopher calls it, a weak resistance. The space is named Domien. In Polish language, Dom means home. However, the noun is masculine. We created an alternation of a word mutating it into neutral form, which is based on an outdated declination, which nowadays in daily use is commonly understood as a lack of education, characterizing the dynamics between the bourgeois and the rest. That time we recognized the building as our research home, as our common. The idea of the privatization of home and its labor. Our domestic work, domestic work is a communized reproductive work, a collective form of reproduction where the walls were already broken down. Embedded public memory in the narrative elements of ruined walls. Ruin as a notion of care, preserving care. The literal and symbolic ceiling were punctured puncture through, we were there to find the potential of our semi-domestic space as a mutual accountability of the commons, to build, to learn, to experiment in different ways of relation and to use the space as open source. Our space positioned as commons and Sil Silvia Federici's understanding of commons means a way of conceiving social relations it's a way of economic relation. It's a way of redefining the organization of our society. The space becomes materialization and exemplification of a small scale practice of commoning. We put our struggle at the center to expose that alienated struggle of precarious domestic and cultural workers with no support given. 
When we are not supported, we must support ourselves. Our labor is an invisible economy, yet sustaining the needs of all. To treat the space as an open source is an act of opposing the commodification of space and knowledge. Space as at the center of sociality, knowledge production and culture, and intergenerational exchange, mutual learning, the basic principles of the commons, can they engage in a broader international coalition? Seem like a starting point for looking for an answer. How can commons become the foundation of the non-capitalistic economy? It was still 2018 when we named our project the practice of experiment of collective self-care. To become a community of care is an experiment in which we learn the possible conditions by failing to meet the planned ones. We need to create a space between, uh, based on participatory planning, renegotiable conditions, to recuperate the power of collective decision-making, vividly and visibly. Dome is a social artistic economic experiment of collective self-care. Manifests the needs for good practices and services in the field, field of contemporary art, culture and social politics. Dome promotes approaches that generate critical reflection and perspective on contemporary social, urban and political issues, emphasizing the need for supporting the most vulnerable, marginalized groups and strengthening the idea of local solidarity in Eastern Europe. DOMI is a two-dimensional project, both equally essential. DOMI Welcome and the Collective curator uh, Curatorial Programme and Agenda. Um, now is the part with the video attended. <laughs> now I will be not just reading to you. I really wanted to share those thoughts, but I felt like it's too um, stuck way of just sharing this project uh, with you in that matter. That's why I decided that the second part would, would be more open. So now I'm not going to just be reading from the pages, maybe a little bit. Uh, so uh, I brought with me um, a publication from the Municipal Gallery uh, of Poznań, um, Arsenal. Uh, it's from last year, uh, the, the title is Acting Together. It's a publication on a few um, collective art practices within the last years in Poznań. Um, and there is as well a part uh, about the Domie. I will put it around so you can have a look. It's just what is important, uh, what I wanted to share is that uh, it's, a, it's a part on Domie, but uh, we gave the voice, the voices to the people who are using Domie to tell their approach, what the project is about. So we didn't write actually our statements on we didn't uh, use the space for um, writing what we think it is. We asked other people who use the place what it is. Um, so that's why there are names of people and their, um, their uh, history of Domia. Um, in the whole publication, there are of course more uh, projects, common projects. So you can have a look. I will now say about the Domi Welcome. Domi Welcome generates ideas and applied knowledge and preserves bonds. The space is understood as an open source which welcomes everyone and anyone who believes in the idea of collaborative processual collaboration, openness, regardless of their capital or resources. Domi is 400 square meters ruin intended for artistic experimentation. It features studio and exhibition space, space for sound work, storage spaces, recreation and accommodation. As a queer person myself, I wanted this space to be dedicated to young artists students, seniors, migrants, diasporas, but in particular LGBTQI plus and FLINTA communities and its individuals. However, a space does not become queer friendly because we plan to do so. It becomes that when it's recognized as one by the community. I'm very glad and, glad and uh, grateful and proud of us that we were able to create a space which is recognized as a safe space in the city. 
Dom is a refuge for all those who need to work, exhibit, or share their processes. Therefore, in the period 2018-2023, Domi has hosted more than 300 artists and 80 musicians, which emphasizes how much an open source space is needed and used. The main principle is that the space exists as a non-monetary common. Usage of the space is, in any capacity is free of charge. An act of key handover is working purely on the basis of trust and understanding the space as our mutual common. This principle is practiced for five years now, catalyzed the community to an act of collective care. Accommodating struggles against various forms of dispossessions towards a creation of new realities and constantly forging new alliances redefines a notion of capital and hierarchical models of power, reconciling mutual education. Location where alternative learning spaces are being created through critical pedagogies, the centralizing notion of knowledge and discourses in a favor of dialogue. The Domis community co-produces the narrative of the project itself and constantly transfigures its shape. Okay, um, so uh, <laughs> uh, what I wanted to say about that part, uh, not read, um, it's that uh, the things I, which I believe are one of the most important um, still is that, for example, at Domia we hosted the first uh, exhibition uh, on sex work rights, um, uh, curated by sex worker and activist Alexandra Kluczek, and as well, all the works were as well made and exhibited only by sex workers. Um, it was 2019 and it was the first exhibition and uh, there, is still, uh, there was still not any other which was fully uh, related towards that topic. Um, so the exhibition called Save Us from Saviors. Um, so yeah, within the, the Domi Welcome there is a lot, of, a lot of things happening different as you can imagine. That's why I didn't decide to show you a lot of photos from like how what we are doing there because it's just too much to even go through it and decide what should be uh, what should be shown. Um, but another thing what I believe was important it was when the escalation uh, of war in Ukraine happened. Um, the University of Poznan uh, invited the students, uh, female students, because uh, male students that age were not allowed to leave Ukraine, right? During um, because of the uh, all the male uh, had to stay in the country. That's why only females could leave uh, uh, officially. So uh, Poznan Art University invited uh, the university from Lviv to uh, to give accommodation for the students. Um, and in the first week, uh, 17 um, students of, uh, of that university did an exhibition in our space. They really felt the need to just express um, things which were happening in their hands, uh, heads and all around them. Uh, so there are those kind of things which I'm mentioning, which I believe, uh, which is emphasizing how the space, which is, as, a, as I call it, open source, how much it can create um, spaces in other understanding of space. Um, there's a lot of young collectives which are starting because of coming to Domia and being able to use the space for free. Um, and uh, you know, like it keeps, uh, and because of that, we, like the team who is running the space, we are learning as well because the narrative is still updated, let's say. It's still young, it's still changing. Uh, we never say no, uh, I mean, as long as you agree with our, uh, I mean, as long as we're not fascist, right? Uh, at the end, you can come and do stuff. Uh, so this is really incredible thing, and I, I feel that I'm learning so much within that process. Uh, and even though I'm not living in Poland at the moment, I was living for a few years, this year was the fifth year, um, and I really believe that it should be taken over completely by the people from the place. I don't want to feel like a you know, dictator from Greece telling what we're supposed to be doing or how to plan the program. I'm still part of the, of the uh, team. 
uh, but slowly I, I feel like I'm becoming more this like um, I don't know like <laughs> like group of uh, I don't know helping or answering questions or supporting the people who are going through some processes which maybe I already went through by running the space. Uh, which is very interesting that the space is used so much by the professors from art university. Uh, this is a bit ridiculous for me, like it shows how much there is no space for free creation and uh, meeting. Uh, of course, every time we collaborate with any institution, then we ask them to pay money for using the space, which we can use for the usage for free for all the others. Um, uh, we as well are running uh, every month podcast, radio podcast. Um, so since a year or two years now, I'm lost already. Um, so I was already It's okay, don't worry. Um, yeah, but what I wanted to share about the podca podcast is that uh, when there are groups of people, young artists doing stuff in the space, then we are giving them our podcast to, to make this hour, to talk about what they want, to, uh, which is again another way of giving some tools uh, and giving a space uh, to, share, uh, to share. So this is Domi Welcome, and the second part is Domi uh, what we are trying to do as our team. Uh, I came up with a term for myself, for my practice, curatorial practice at Domie. I'm not calling myself a curator, but a pauper gallerist. Uh, from Latin, pauper means poor. Um, this is a term I created for my own work, for Domie purposes. Um, and my work there focuses on exiled artists, artists at risk of social exclusion in Poland regarding political tensions in Eastern Europe. Pauper from Latin means in the legal phrase uh, in the form of poor person, uh, and it as well means the state of being supported at public expenses. Um, so uh, yeah, within uh, within that pauper gallerist, like. Um, why I call it that way, because we don't earn money out of it, we don't have money. Uh, so my um, curatorial practice is focused on bringing some voices uh, to the public, not of gaining anything out of it. Um, and now I would like to show you... Uh... Okay, so I maybe will try to finish it quickly. Um, um, but I think this is, uh, seems important to share. This is a collector, it's a Belarusian collective. Um, this is the platform, but I think the internet is not working well, or maybe it's very long, so maybe we have to wait for this to, um, to be there. Uh, it's a collective, um, I have to read their names, um, uh, made, founded by Sergei Hiroshenko, Alexei Borosinok, and Sergei Shabotin. Um, and this is the, the platform, it's an archive of Belarusian artists and cultural practitioners, uh, which within the regime of uh, Lukashenko, most of the artists, are the, um, they don't exist officially. Any work they did before, it's, it's not there. And which is very interesting as well uh, in the times of the, the war in Ukraine, that um, today I got a call from other art uh, institution and they asked me if I know some collective from Poznan. They wanted to invite, uh, and they said, but they can't be Belarusians. Uh, <laughs> I said, why? And they said that uh, because the money which are for this giving from the grant, which is stated that no Russian or Belarusian artist can have this money. But the, in 2020, there was a uh, failed revolution in Belarus, right? So uh, most of the artists who are political artists who were part of this revolution or were trying to conduct it, they are on exile in Poland. Um, and there is a big part of Belarusian artists. So we are collaborating with Kalektar, um, supporting them and doing this archive. Uh, I would like to go to the index of artists. Oh. It's, very, it's a lot of work. It's uh, in few languages translated as well. Um, and what we are doing as well at um, we are uh, making art residency for Belarusian artists 
the last year two artists from Belarus came and this year six more are coming, which is very exciting. Um, I believe this is, uh, this is one of the practices that's very important for me at Domi at the moment. Um, we as well hosted the exhibition uh, last year, uh, creating, trying to create coalition between Polish, Belarusian and Ukrainian artists in, uh, in Poland, because all of those people are together now there. This is this place where people who cannot be back to Belarus or cannot be back to Ukraine, everyone are in Poland. Um, so we are trying to work on this, uh, on this coalition, uh, but what is the, the, the actual work at the end is not just uh, doing exhibitions, which are there and they are for people to see. Uh, but what I learned during this uh, practice is that uh, we basically going through collective traumas together, because when we are meeting together from people who are coming from war or from regime, and we are trying to say something, we will be facing those traumas. We are in them together. So this is, I'm trying to like, <laughs> very fast right now, but speaking about very serious stuff. Uh, so I think I will skip then uh, talking about the, all the, the precarious part of the project and the money and all the collaboration with the city. I think maybe this is just not time for it anymore. Uh, just maybe one sentence I will add that um, the big part of Domia of the project is a collaboration with the city, with the city council and its mayor. Uh, while I don't believe that the change is um, purely oppositional oppo oppo struggle, in order to actually bring something, we need to create something else, something new. And me, as an artist, I don't, uh, I wouldn't be a person who would be going to the city council because I would like the idea of that. Uh, but I believe this is the only way to create something, to actually have something. That's why the building we have, even though it's not, it's, it is a ruin. Where it's, we don't pay any rent and all the utilities are covered by the Department of Culture. Um, and it's a process of reclaiming the building as well in the sense that it's possible to be there. So the, the water coming through those big holes at the beginning of my presentation it was actual like part of the ceilings in the building. Uh, with the time we were able to negotiate with the city and city make a new rooftop for us, which was very symbolical, as you can imagine. Um, and then just maybe I will end with that one, uh, with that one picture. I am here. So this is a letter we got from the city council that they agree to renovate our uh, rooftop, even though before I signed with my name that I will do all the renovation of the building. Um, and then we sell this letter to the uh, main art institution in the city, to their collection, uh, as an official document that the city council is collaborating with um, off space, at the same time not trying to uh, tell us what we should or shouldn't exhibit. So, uh, <laughs> I think my presentation is longer than I expected, but uh, for me, this kind of way, it's querying the idea of the city itself and the relations we can, we can have within. I don't know, I'm very, I guess I really believe in revolution, you know, <laughs> but uh, I think that's all maybe for tonight. Um, if you have any questions, please ask. I didn't get it. Hi. Uh, so the building is owned by the municipality, by the yes. city council, and you, the collective, you don't pay any rent. Mm -hmm. So you squatted the place, or not? No, no, no. Was it's it in collaboration with the city, the city council? Yeah, it's an official collaboration. Uh, I went, uh, I had the, like every citizen of the, sh of the city, apparently, can have a meeting with the mayor. You have to wait for it, I don't know, half a year or a year. But officially, you are you can have it. It's your right to do so. So I did that when I came to Poland. I had a meeting and I started talking with him about my ideas and how we're supposed to create something together. And I'm lucky enough that in that city there is still no fascist uh, uh, people because Poland now is very much taken over uh, by fascist politicians. So um, I would say this project is possible because those people there as well they are. You know, they're still politicians, right? So I'm not naive in all of that. But 
they are trying to uh, as well go in some sense of their boxes. Um, and yeah, we, we, we are able to use the space. Thank you for asking. <laughs> And actually, uh, can you remember me your name? Oh, Marketa. Marketa, she just told me when I arrived that she was in Domie in May or in March, March, uh, April? Yeah, April, mm -hmm. March, yeah. On the exhibition of Japanese uh, artists, which is uh, incredible that someone was there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, we are, um, you know, we have the space for free. Uh, we have officially, we are running it, uh, we are the, the tenants. But and we don't pay a rent. But at the same time, uh, we are struggling with um, with the ruin. Like I'm talking about this romanticized idea of the ruin, the symbolical idea of the ruin. But on the other hand, it's nothing. It's, it was not. It didn't come because uh, of the heroic gesture or that I was looking for its symbols. You know, it was just there was nothing else possible. You know, and uh, and we don't have a heating, so most of the year it's impossible to use the space. And what we were talking with Marketa, but uh, it's interesting that still a lot of people are using this space in the winter time, even it's super cold inside. But it just shows that people still prefer to have this under these conditions than non-space. Yeah, so if you anytime in Poznan, you are welcome to come. <laughs> Maybe don't come during the winter time, I don't know. But yeah, as I said, it's an open space and uh, if any of you or your friends would have to create, organize something there, you are open to do it. Right now, yesterday was actually a vernissage of, a, um, of an international project, students from Monnichen, how to say it in English? Monnichen. Um, they they like found us online and then created a project with people from Poland. So it's a lot of this international exchange is as well happening, which in times of this uh, where the Poland of the society is going, like closing the border, the border with Belarus now it's very um, hot uh, border. While we are uh, welcoming all the Ukrainians, we are not welcoming people who are coming through that border which are mainly people from uh, so-called Middle East countries. Uh, so the tension in Poland are, are very visible right now. We are welcoming white refugees, but this is the only people we are welcoming at the moment and probably it will end as well in some time. Um, so yeah, so this inter, uh, inter exchange within the project, it gives as well a lot, because uh, it's not Warsaw and most of the international uh, projects are mainly always happening uh, in bigger cities. So this decentralization of it uh, was, is as well an important part in the thinking about uh, the program of the place. But yeah, so maybe uh, have a look on this, right, not right now maybe, but at your home, this character.org, they are doing a really great job and it's uh, really a lot of, uh, a lot of artists, Belarusian artists, um, and there are like pictures, there, there are statements, CVs, it's just, very interesting, but now it's not looking well. But it's uh, it's very warm and very sharing. Thank you for listening about Damien. Uh, it was a pleasure.